Hi dancers, next we're going to do a makeup tutorial. I know a lot of my students ask how I do my makeup for performances. So my assignment today is to do some pretty heavy, dark eye makeup. So be sure to check with your dance instructors what type of look they're looking for. This video will show you how to generally do your makeup, practice doing your makeup before your actual performances. Just like with your dances, you have to practice before you go on stage. So I'm starting with a clean face. I just washed my face. And then I'm going to start with a primer. Now, depending on how old you are, how long you've been dancing, just kind of do what feels right for you. If there are certain steps of doing makeup that really make you feel uncomfortable, I know a lot of my younger students are really not comfortable doing eyeliner and mascara and things like that yet. And as you get older, you can start adding these steps. So again, practice, see what works for you, and do what you can. Okay, so I'm going to put primer just a little bit on my fingers and then just dab it around all over my face. So primer is kind of like a base that gives the makeup something to cling to and last longer but also look smoother and cleaner on your face. When I was introduced to primer, it was a game changer because I have really oily skin. So anything to make makeup last longer on my face is awesome because it used to just melt off before. I also have a primer that is made specifically for my eyes. So just a little bit there. This will help the eye shadow to last longer. So I'm doing an outdoor performance. It's really important that my makeup lasts because it's going to be hot. And also my primer has sunscreen in it. I'm not sponsored by any of these things, but if you were curious what I was using. Okay, next I like to just color in my eyebrows a little bit. I already have pretty thick eyebrows, but this just makes them more even looking and more bold looking. So what I'm doing is I take this brush and I swirl it around a little bit in the eyebrow powder. And then I'm doing, the noise you're hearing is this little dab, just so that the powder isn't so thick that it like drizzles onto my cheek. And it will apply more evenly. Okay, next with eyeshadow, I'm gonna pick this pretty light color here and just swirl my brush around in there. I have a different type of brush, it's a little fluffier. And I'm doing the little trick again where you see all that powder that kind of flew off that could have just been caked on my eye. So instead, you dab it off and it will evenly distribute better. I'm gonna swirl around this, this light color all over my eyelid underneath my eyebrow. That gives it a clean surface as well when I start adding color. So I'm going to go a little bit darker in the crease of my eyelid. There's big strokes there. Makeup's pretty cool. It's, it's an art form all in itself. I mean, there are people that study and go to school for makeup. And a lot of the tips I learned are either from my dance teachers from makeup artists or from uh, models, beauty pageant winners. So I wanna just make sure to pass on their little tips and tricks to you. Next, I'm gonna go a little bit darker. In the crease. And because my assignment is to have really dark eyes today, I'm gonna to go even darker. And I tried to spread it out and blend within the crease.
Next is eyeliner. And again, there's different types of eyeliner. There's liquid, there's marker, there's pencil. Now I'm just more comfortable using pencil because I've just used it more often. If you like to explore with all these other ways that are available to you, feel free to do that. But I'm just going to demonstrate pencil today. So I pull my skin taut so that I can draw as close to the lash line as possible. This is where art class from grade school comes in handy. Respect, respect to all the art teachers out there. So for me, starting from the outside going in is more feasible. For you, it might be different. Also, sometimes your dance teachers will ask for this wing line to make it really stand out from far away. And then some of your teachers will want the bottom line as well. And some people are actually really comfortable drawing on the line right here. I'm not really comfortable doing that, so I try to just draw it as close to the tear line as possible. And then I blend and just try to get it as even as possible. Yeah, just do whatever's right for you. And remember, we wear makeup in performing arts, literally everybody, because of lighting and distance. You need to show that you still have features on your face, whereas if you have a lot of lights on you, it, it drowns that out. So we want your beautiful face to stand out, and that's why you wear makeup in, in performing arts. If you're on TV, if you're taking photos, performing on stage, behind a camera, everybody wears makeup. It's all good. You're still you. You're still beautiful. This is just part of the uniform. Think of it that way. It's part of your costume. Next, we're going to do mascara. So I'm going to swirl it around, make sure I have enough on there. And if you're noticing any chunks, you can just kind of scrape them off on the container. And some people like to blink into the wand to get it going. Others like to start at the base of the lashes and then wiggle their way up and out. If you are going to use a lash curler, please use it before putting on your mascara. Curl first. I don't have one, but if you do curl first, then mascara. So again, you can blink into the wand or start at the base, wiggle it up, whatever works for you. And you're going to want to do this like four times on each side. I don't have very thick lashes, so I like to do a lot of layers. And alternating between the eyes allows one layer on this side to dry before you add on another layer. Try to rotate your wand every once in a while too, or just refill it with more mascara. One side's always gonna feel easier than the other. <laughs> oh, did the mascara face. It helps you make your eyes wider. I don't know what that is. Okay, before attempting the lower lashes, just let them dry a little bit so that if they accidentally touch your lids, it doesn't smear on your fabulous eyeshadow. Attempting the lower lashes now. Now they're a little chunky. So I do have this kind of brush where I can brush some of the chunks out. And again, if you don't have and some of this stuff, it's okay. You just use what you have, make it work. Or a lot of these can just be bought really affordable at any drugstore, supermarket. Easy breezy. Okay, this is the reason why I do my eyes first before the skin around it is because sometimes little powders and drops and chunks from mascara and all that go onto my skin 
on my cheek. So here's the opportunity where you can wipe that off, but then also we're gonna be covering it up too. Next, I have cover up for the dark circles. So I'm just gonna blend it with my finger. They do have tools for this, but again, just make it work with what you have. This will make your fabulous eye makeup stand out more too. Okay, and if I have any extreme zits, here's how I cover them up. You can see one right there. You have a little bit of green, it cancels out the red. Just dollop that on there, and then usually these kits come with uh, the skin tone. And remember, find the makeup that matches your skin tone. Find what works for you and what matches you. So we're gonna blend that. And then I have my foundation. If you prefer liquid foundation or powder foundation, it's up to you. Use what you prefer. For me, I'm gonna use liquid today. I'm just gonna plop a little on my hand. And then I have a foundation brush. I feel like a painter. And then I'm just going to spread that out all around my skin. It evens out my skin tone and I have a lot of, you know, little zits and uh, freckles. This just makes things easier for photographers to edit too, if you're doing things like modeling. I like to bring my foundation into my ears, my hairline, and below my chin so that it blends more. A lot of the times if you do not do that and you take a picture or caught on camera, it'll look like you're wearing a mask, but we don't want that. We want it to look natural even though we know it's not natural. So if you blend it further than you think you need to, it'll, it won't look like a mask anymore. Next, some people like to use bronzers. Kind of a new phenomenon to me. I didn't ever use this as a kid, but I'm gonna put a little bit here, right here. And again, you don't have to do this, but uh, there's a thing called contouring. I totally got into. I put a little bit here. It makes my nose look more narrow. <laughs> a little bit here. Narrows up my chin. My neck. And then blush. For, for normal everyday, you would probably use a lighter color, but for stage and anything performance based, I use my darker color here. And some people like to do the smile thing where they smile and put it on so then they can really see where their cheek stands out. Or some people do the pucker thing. So then they go above the line. So whatever works for you. And I swoosh out from the center. Next, I have finishing powder. Again, I have really oily skin, so it's important for me to put on finishing powder. It just keeps the makeup on longer and better, and it makes me not look shiny. And again, I'm gonna be dancing so I'm going to get sweaty, I'm going to get shiny, and this just helps prevent it from getting too sweaty and shiny. All right, I also know that my director is going to want a dark lip. Be sure to check with yours what color lip they want. So I have lip liner here, and I'm going to trace the outside of my lips. Some people like to do the lipstick first or the lip gloss or whatever lip, lip marker, whatever lip product you prefer to use, use that. Whichever one you're more comfortable with. I like to do lip liner first. You can do it second, whichever works for you. So here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna relax my lips instead of like making it all tense. I'm gonna try to relax so that it's easier to draw.
And I was also taught this trick to draw little uh, lines from the lip liner onto your lips. I think it just makes the lipstick stay better. Anyway, I learned that from a friend that went to study makeup. Okay, here's my lipstick. Try to get lip liner that matches the lipstick as well or as close to it as possible. Ooh, unless you're going for something really artistic and, and meaningful, then you know, absolutely, absolutely play with your colors and all that. The possibilities are endless with art. Okay, and I do this little press together trick with my lips to spread it evenly. And also, the dancer trick that I like to do, because we're gonna be smiling and expressive a lot, is a lot of the times the lipstick ends up on your teeth. So if you do this, if you stick your finger in your lips and then pull it out, okay, see that? That could have been on my teeth later. And last, I have a finishing spray, again, I have oily skin, I'm gonna be dancing outside, so I need things to, all the help I can get to keep makeup in place and keep me from being shiny and sweaty. Let the finishing spray dry. If you open your eyes or get it in your eyes too soon, it might hurt a little bit, so just be patient. Allow yourself enough time to do your makeup, and the more you practice, the easier it gets. Oh, another thing that some people like to do is highlight. Um, I didn't I didn't include this with the eye makeup portion before, but if you like to highlight, you get a little bit of a shimmery light color. And I'm going to put it close to my brow. And then close to the tear duct. just adds a little something extra see okay I hope that makeup tutorial was really helpful good luck with it all with your practice if you have any questions let me know subscribe thumb notification and I'll see you next time